Perfect, okay, shalom. Shalom. I would like, you know, this week is a very unique week. We are in the middle of Sfirat Omer. We are after Yom Ha'atzma'ut. And uh, we have Lagba Omer coming soon. We have Yom Yerushalayim coming soon. And then we have Shavuot, of course. All this is under one umbrella. So I would like very, very much today to share with you um, you know, many sources really about Yom Ha'atzma'ut and a little bit of Yom Yerushalayim. In Yom Yerushalayim, we'll talk more about Yerushalayim. Why I'm trying to share it with you? Because there are so, not so many, but, you know, quite few people in the world that they're not very happy on Yom Ha'atzma'ut. So I would like to bring the sources you know, especially from a Gaon Mivinna. Gaon Mivinna, you know, he's a rabbi that it's a consensus. Every then, you know, he's the Gdolador, you know, for many generations, that he himself, how he predicted, mamash clearly, he predicted Yom Ha'atzma'ut and how we should celebrate by Rabbi Ovada Yosef and other uh, great rabbis. And even by logic and by common sense, why we have really to celebrate big time Yom Ha'atzmaut and Yom Rushalayim. There is no question that all the Jews celebrating Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot. There is no question that all the Jews celebrating Purim and Hanukkah. But all of a sudden, Yom Ha'atzmaut and Yom Yerushalayim, so there are some sort of dispute among the Jewish nation. I'm not talking about religious, not religious. I'm talking about the Orthodox and ultra, ultra, ultra Orthodox. You know, so we will see what their point and what is the point and why I think, you know, and I, on behalf of our rabbis, you know, we have to celebrate big time. Why we have to be so happy with what we have. So first of all, we're talking about the, the key word. Hashem created the word and he wrote the Torah for one reason. What is the reason? That if you make a mistake, you can fix it. In another word, you can make tshuva. And how many paragraphs in the Torah we have about tshuva? Only one. By the end of the Sefer Dvarim, in Parashat Nitzavim, Perek Lamed, 11 psukim about tshuva. Here is in front of you. So look what Hashem said to us in Sefer Dvarim. You have the blessing and the curse. And mean the end of the curses will be the end of the exile, the galut. Because Hashem, you know, gave us the galut as a punishment, and you know, the redemption will be that all the Jews will be in Israel. What is the verb, the sign that it will come? Veshavta. What is Veshavta? And you will return the word tshuva. You will return ad Hashem Elochecha. What is ad in English? Till. Until. Until. Remember, this is a key word. You will see in a few minutes why I'm asking you. Okay? So you will return until Hashem, your God, means until you reach Hashem. When you make tshuva, you're coming to Hashem. So you make tshuva until you reach Hashem, v'shamata bekolo, and you listen to his voice, k'chol asher ani metzavecha yom atau v'anecha b'chol levavcha v'chol nafshecha. All the mitzvot that I gave you, and you will fulfill with all your heart and all your soul. Pasuk gimel, v'shab Adonai Elohecha, Hashem also will return, not only will we return to him, he will return to us. V'rihamecha, you know what is, remember what is rahamim? Mercy. Mercy, very good. Mercy. Rahamim, remember this word. When I stop, I want, because we're going to use it during the shiur. So Rahamim, there is Rahamim, mercy, and there is judgment, din. So Hashem, when He will bring all the Jews to Eretz Israel, He will use the Midata Rahamim, the mercy. Veshav, what He will do? Hashem will return mikol amim, and He will gather you together from all the nations, including Panama, by the way. 
אשר הפיצך אדוני אלוהיך שמה. Which has some spread you all over, you know, as a consequence for our sins. But Baruch Hashem, Hashem promised to us that one day that we will make tshuva, Hashem will return to us too and will bring all the Jews to Eretz Yisrael. Ve'eviyacha, Adonai Elohecha el Aretz Yisrael Arshu Avotecha, ve'erishta, ve'etivcha, ve'erbecha ma'avotecha. What a beautiful pasuk. Listen. Ve'eviyacha, Hashem will bring you, right? Your God, to where? אל הארץ, to Israel, אשר ירשו אבותיך, which your forefathers inherit, the land, אברהם, יצחק ויעקב, והטיבך, and you'll make it good for you, וירבך מאבותיך, even he will give you more than he gave to your forefathers. וואו, this is the most powerful פסוק in this פרשה. Remember, by the way, I want you to know, you know which פסוק is it? Look line 13, פסוק ה. Hey. Okay, Pasuk A, Perek Lamed. But I put number here. Do you see the number? What number you see? Okay, keep this number in your mind. We need it later. 5708. Keep this in mind. Umal Adonai Elohecha et levavcha ve'et levav zaraecha. Hashem will make a covenant between your heart and our heart. By the way, et levavcha ve'et levav. את לבבך ואת לבב. מה זה ה-abbreviation of these four words? את לבבך ואת לבב. א', למד, ו', למד. What is א', למד, ו', למד? אלול. So the תשובה is the month of תשובה, is the month of אלול. כן? לאהבה את השם אלוקיך, אין השם, again, repeat what he said before. Love Hashem with all your heart and all your soul. Leman Hayecha, it's good for your life. Benatan Adonai Elochet Kola Alot, Kola Alot, all the curses and the swear that I made before, He will bring upon your enemy. Al Oivecha, Val Son Echa, Asher Dafucha. Every nation that chase after you because you are Jews, I will bring upon all the curses upon them. What you hear recently, You know, from people coming to Israel, trying to kill innocent citizens in Israel. Iran on the other side, trying to prepare an atomic bomb against Israel. All these people, believe me, 100%, 99.9, 100%, all the curses will be upon them. Very, very soon. Say Amen. Amen. <laughs> and you, Am Israel, Tashuv. Again, what is Tashuv? Will return. Will return. Veshamata bekol Adonai v'asita et kol mitzvotav asher anochim mitzvcha ayom. Votircha Adonai Elohecha and then kitishma. So what I want to show you, listen, and now the last pasuk when he said Teshuva. Do you remember when I said before Teshuva? Ad Hashem Elokecha. Nachon? What is Ad? Until... Hashem Elokecha. But by the end of this paragraph, look what he said. Ki tishma bekol Adonai Elohecha. When you hear the voice of Hashem, mean they hear the voice, mean follow his instruction. Lishmor mitzvotav, chokotav, to observe the mitzvot in the constitution, which is written in this Torah. Ki, look line seven. Ki tashuv, what the next word? El, El Hashem Elokecha. Now it's not Ad. Remember before we said Ad until, what is L? Two. Two. Now what question you will ask? What is the difference between until and two? Okay, because this is a big difference. When we started the Parashat Tshuva, you make Tshuva, you make Tshuva Ad Hashem. But at the end will be in Eretz Israel, you will reach El Hashem. אוקיי? Okay? In a few seconds we'll see the different verses in El Hashem. כי המצווה הזאת אשר אנוכי מצווך היום לא נפלאתי ממך ולא רחוקה. This מצווה of תשובה is not up in heaven. It's not far away from you. It's doable. It's doable. You can do it. So don't say it's not for me. So now, my dear friend, the Hidush that I see in this parasha 
Usually when we say tshuva, the word teshuva, what does that mean? You know, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Chodesh Elul, to make tshuva on the sin that we have made during the year. But here teshuva is double meaning. It's not only repentance, it's also to return to Israel. The sign of the big tshuva is to go to Eretz Israel. Did you ever think about this? That means everybody that make Aliyah to Eretz Israel, he is making mitzvah of teshuva. So it's a big chidosh, it's double meaning. Now another I would like to give you from the Aftarah of Shabbat Shuva. The Aftarah is, we see the two concepts, Ad and El. Shuva Israel Ad Hashem Elokecha. Return, O Israel, until Hashem is your God. Ki chashalta ba'avonecha, because you have sinned. Now look at the next pasuk. Kehu machem devarim. Take with you devarim means teshuva. Veshuvu and return what? El Hashem. Again in the Aftarah we see two levels. One Ad, one El. One until, one two. So we'll see what is the difference. Here do you see the Malbim? The Malbim, he explained the difference. Veshavta Ad Hashem Elokecha. Ainu gam ken mitzvah al mitzvat atshuva vegam avtaha sheyashuvo ad Hashem. Uvamet ye tshuvatam aleyem barzot galutam. Now you are in Panama. Panama is Galut or Eretz Israel? Is Galut, nachon? Can you make tshuva? Of course. Of course. Now until which which madrega you can reach? Ad Hashem or El Hashem? What is the difference between Ad and El? Listen, I'll give you an example. When I say to my students, read from Pasuk Aleph, Ad Pasuk Yud. What is me? What the what the student will ask me? What is, what are they going to ask me? Is it including Oh, including you or add you and not including you. So when we say add is up to and not anymore, you cannot go in. You cannot not including. When you say Ayan is including, you say yes, you can make Chuba in the in in Panama, you can make Chuba in America, in the Galut, but you will reach the Madraga Ad. Until the door. You reach the door, but you cannot open the door. You cannot go in. But when you make tshuva in Eretz Israel, by the end of the paragraph was El to Israel. When you make tshuva in Eretz Israel, you can open the door and go inside. Inside Kodesh HaKodashim. You can go inside Bet HaMikdash. That's the difference. So you see now, again, we have two levels of, of tshuva. One Ad, one El. One is until, up to, not including, okay? Which is galut, which is, of course, you can make tshuva, but you cannot open the door and go inside. When he said, Ad Hashem, when you make a full tshuva, Be'ezrat Hashem, very soon, full tshuva is to go to Eretz Israel. Now, million dollars question. Cappuccino on the house. Now, which one is higher level? Do you know we make Aliyot after 1945? You know, in the time even before 1945, we had Aliyot to Eretz Israel, Aliyah Rishonah, Shniyah, Shlishit, you know, third Aliyah, it was few levels of Aliyot. Who made Aliyot? Religious people or secular people? Both, both, both. But the majority? Secular. The secular people. Most, 90%, most of the people were not religious at all. Especially from Russia. Okay, they came and not religious. Now, did they make me, now I'm not Shomer Shabbat, they eat treif and everything. They're not Shomer Torah at all. Even Yom Kippur, they don't keep Yom Kippur. When they make, when they came to Eretz Israel, did they make mitzvah or not? Yes, they make. They make mitzvah, even in, in spite of the fact they not shomer Torah mitzvot. Now I'm going back to Emma Banim Smeha, remember? Emma Banim Smeha, Shlomo Teichtel, that he was in the Shoah, and he wrote the book, Emma Banim Smeha. He, you know, he was Haredi, 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 anti-Zionist, and during the Shoah he understood it's a big mistake, and he kind of like make tshuva, and he became very, very Zionist. And he made a vow, neder, that as long as he's alive, he will write a book about Eretz Israel. 
what a big mitzvah. He said, not me. He said in the book, if we would make Aliyah on time, we can prevent the Holocaust, the Shoah. The mistake is we didn't go to Eretz Israel. That's what Reb Teichel said. Now listen, Reb Teichel bring Ahavat Yonatan, and he said, listen, you see line one. שזה, כשכתב שזה גופה, שאנו חוזרים לארץ ישראל, זה גופה לתשובת החשב. He said, this is the essence of תשובה. The people make עליית to ארץ ישראל, of course it's תשובה. This is the main תשובה. וזה עיקר התשובה. This is the main of the תשובה. והנה כעת בזמננו אחר שנשנו ליבם אפילו היותר גרועים. You know what is יותר גרועים? The bad people, but he is talking about the people who not Shomer Torah Mitzvot, not Shomer Torah, not Shomre Shabbat. You know, they said, and Dafka, they are, they return to, uh, to Eretz Israel, And they are devoting their life to go to the undergrounds and then to the IDF to fight for Eretz Israel, And they chose on their own to come to Eretz Israel. Nobody forced them to come to Eretz Israel. It was by free will. אז הוא אומר ליין סיקס, בוודאי לי תשובה תחשב להם בעיני הקדוש ברוך הוא. השם will consider it to them as a big big מצווה. Now what about שבת? What about כשר? כושר פוד? ומה שאינם מקיימים את מצוות התורה and the fact that they do not fulfill the מצוות of the Torah מפני שלא נתגדלו ולא נתחנכו בזה. והם בזה כתינוק שנשבע בין הגויים. You know what is Tinoch Shanishva Ben Agoim? If a baby was captured by, by the Goim and he grew up and he doesn't know he is Jewish, he's Yehudi. Now he, he drives on Shabbat, he drives, he's going to church. Hashem consider it to him as a sin or not? Oh. No. Hashem will not consider, he doesn't know he's no. Jewish. He doesn't know. It's called a baby that was captured by the Goim. He doesn't know. Of course Hashem will not punish him for this. So now, if you see these people, he said, Rav Shlomo Teichel, the people who came to Eretz Israel, they just like a baby that was captured among the Goim. They never went to Jewish school. They never opened Torah. They don't know what is Torah. They know nothing about Yiddishkeit. They know nothing about Judaism. So just, they are just ignorant, that's all. But the fact they are ignorant and they didn't know and they come into Eretz Israel, tell me now, in another word, if you have a person that's not religious at all and he wants to give tzedakah, big tzedakah to Bet Knesset, can he give tzedakah? Would you tell him, no, you're not religious, I don't accept your tzedakah? Yes. Oh, I yes. bet with you every rabbi will be more than happy to accept the tzedakah. <laughs> he said that tzedakah is tzedakah, of course, but there is no contradiction. By the way, there are some people who are not allowed to take tzedakah for them to Bet Knesset. It's not a joke. But if he doesn't know anything about Torah, that's different. So he said, you know, he come to Eretz Israel, of course it's a mitzvah. So as a Rambam, it says line nine, he says, gufa aliyah, the essence of the Aliyah, Rambam says, Vadai li tshuva tehashem. It is considered as a repentance. It's not only returning to Israel, so the word teshuva is coming double meaning. One returning to Israel and one repenting. Repent teshuva. Umekaimim baze mitzvat ase is a positive commandment of teshuva. Not only they making it, this is the main thing. That means if I made a sin and I, has shalom, I used to turn on light on Shabbat and now I don't make it. I make tshuva, I don't make it. Of course it's tshuva. But the tshuva to go to Eretz Israel is much higher than this. Both of them are tshuva. But the real tshuva is to go to Eretz Israel. Wow. So now we understand Parashat Nitzavim. He's talking about the Hidush, I say, you know, to go to make Aliyah to Eretz Israel is tshuva, is mamash repentance. Rav Kook also agree with Rambam, and he explained here 
that the only problem of sometimes, if you ask now people in New York, in Boston, in Australia, in Panama, why they don't make Aliyah? Okay, what is the main chuva? What is the main response of people? What people will answer? Why? That their family is where they are. Okay, family and livelihood. And, and, right, and parnasa. Parnasa and mishpacha, nakhon? Okay. Now, what if somebody has enough parnasa, he can bring all his family, and in spite of the fact that he can, he has few houses in Israel, and he doesn't make aliyah. You know, he said, because there is some sort of self, like ego inside. It's like when you make tshuva, let's say you're 65 years old, okay? 60 years old. And then your rabbi proved to you there is God and there is Torah and it's good to make tshuva. The man will make tshuva right away? I prove it to him. I prove it to him scientifically. The Torah is from heaven and Hashem is real. I prove it to him. You know, it's not easy. It's not easy. Not everybody, many people will not make tshuva. You know why? Because of their ego. He said, what? So I admit that I lived by mistake for 65 years. I have to make U-turn now at this age. He's ashamed. He's embarrassed from whom? from his friends, from his colleagues. Everybody said, you're mentally sick. You leave now everything in the Galut and go to Eretz Israel? You're crazy. Or what? You're going to put kippah on your head? Are you going to be Shomer Shabbat? You're mentally sick. You need a psychiatrist. He's afraid. He's afraid what the friend, what the gang will tell him, what the neighbors will tell him. That's ego. I'll give you another metaphor, another example. You are in Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv is the center of Israel, okay? What is the south city of, of Israel? South, south city. Uh, Elat. Elat is the southern point, okay? He wants to reach Elat. Now, what is the north point of Israel? You know which city? Golan. What? Golan. Yeah, Golan, Nahon, Metula. There is a city called Metula. Okay, Golan also. Let's say he wants to go to Elad, and by mistake he took the bus north. And then near Afula, Hedera, when it's north, the bus said, We are in Afula. And then the man realized he made a mistake. It's not what you should do. You should get off the bus and take a bus south. You know, he's so embarrassed to get off, the people will make fun of him. He's driving with the driver all the way to Golan, to the Metula. And then quietly and secretly, he's going to the cashier of the bus and buy another ticket to Elat. Now he has to go now from Metula all the way to Elat. But he could do it in the middle of the way. You can save seven hours of driving, eight hours of driving and money. No, but he's embarrassed. He's embarrassed when people said he is he is crazy. How could you take a bus north if you need south? That's the same thing about religion. The same thing about Israel. He said, how could I admit? How could I put kippah? 60 years I never put kippah on my head. Why should I put kippah? And Baruch Hashem in Panama, I know, I know personally many people that they made tshuva. They made tshuva. They were not the tea. And they made it. But it's process. It's not one second. I know the story, Rene is here. No, Rene is not here. But the, the, the Rene and Yossi has a beautiful story how they make tshuva. But he said even both of them not the same time make tshuva. But everybody take his time, everybody take the process. But it takes time because you have to control to say this is the emet and this is what I should do. So the emet is the tshuva to return to Hashem. And the emet is that Be'ezrat Hashem, we have to be in Eretz Israel. Sooner or later. But you're right. The main two reasons that people do not forget about the ego, the main reason that people today do not mature, even they want to go to Israel, they have a big family, they're afraid to leave the family, and they have good livelihood, and they're afraid. That's parnasa. That's at least makes sense, make logic.
Okay, now, this parasha, Dafka, we're talking about the jubilee, the jubilee. You know what is jubilee? The, the 50th year. You know what happened in the 50th year? Let's go free. Yeah, everything returning to the first owner. You know, if a slave is working seven years, after seven years he can go free, right? If he wants to stay with the, with the, his master, can he stay? Yes. Yes, he you can know, stay. They do something on the ear. Nahon, in the ear, Nahon, and then he stay. But the 50th year, he cannot. 50th year, everybody is going back to be free men. If you are a slave of human being, you are a slave of a slave. The peak of freedom is to be slave of Hashem. We learn about this, right? So he said, even the word over there, when he said, Ukratem dror la'aretz. If you open the parasha, oh, for you is not the parasha, for you, okay? But right, so, so, Parashat Emor, you're going to read Emor this Shabbat, nachon? Okay, we are behind us. In Parashat, when you read, the, we're talking about the the 50th year, the Yovel, it's called Yovel, Yovel. it says Dror. Dror, you know what is the word Dror? You know the translation of the word Dror? Dror is the, the, the translation is freedom. Chofesh. You know the bird, how we say bird in Hebrew, another is except Tzipor? Tzipor dror. Tzipor dror, because the Tzipor, the bird is free. Always she's flying wherever she wants. So now it's a beautiful word that you see in the parasha, we say dror, ukratem dror la'aretz. Even the land going back to the first owner. Everything going back to the first owner. But Ramban get beautiful. You know what is really Dror? You see, Dror, how do you say generation in Hebrew? Dor, Dor, Dor. Do you know what is Dor square? You know what I say square? Dor times Dor. So Ramban said, Dror is Dor times Dor. Midor le Dor. When you see your son and you see your grandson, your grandchildren, and you see sometimes by Ezrat Hashem, your great grandchildren, that's really Dror. When you feel free, you see that the next generation is with you. And could you imagine that you have four generations and some people has the school to see five generations and you see, you know, four, five generations in Eretz Israel? That's really Dror. So he said, Binus not Dor Vador. That's Dor, Midor Le Dor. Remember what he said? What, did, what is the highlight of Lela Seder? What is the highlight? Of, do you remember what we said? What is the highlight, the peak of Lela Seder? The children to ask. Exactly. The when the chil grandchildren, when the grandchildren on your knees, on your laps, and they say, Manishtana, the Dor, Midor Le Dor. You have three generations. That's the Lord. That's according to Ramban. Now, I would like to see the process of Eretz Israel. How, you know, how we accepted, how we got Eretz Israel. How many years we were out of Israel in the Galut? How many years? Do you know how many years? We, were, we had no sovereignty on Eretz Israel. You know how many years? You don't know Hatikva by heart. Hatikva bat shnot alpaim. More than 2,000 years we did not have sovereignty on Eretz Israel. Until 1948. You know what is 2,000 years? Keep this in mind. And all of a sudden we have a state. So let's see what happened. And you know, remember the date of Yom Ha'atzma'ut? The date is Hei Biyar. Remember this. Hey, B.R. Look line 10. Hey, B.R. And the year was Tafshin Het. Okay? The year, Hey, there is Hat Tafshin Het. You know what is the Hey? The Hey is 5,000. Tafshin is 700. Het is 8. 
So 5,700 years and eight years ago, it was from the creation, we got the state of Israel. But you will see in a minute is a very unique and special date. Hey, ER. So let's see. The Midrash. I'm going to the Midrash. Abu Ven, you see the Midrash line 13. Hayu Malchim Baderech. They were walking in the street. When Ityaga Ben, the Ben, the son got tired. Amar la Aviv, Abba, where is the country? Where is the Medina? Vechana Medina, where is the country? I don't see city. Amar lo Bni, Siman Zeye Beadecha, I'll give you a sign. Im Raita Bet Kvarot, if you see cemetery, Da, you should know that the state, the Medina, is very close to you. You know what he said to him? Don't worry, the moment you see cemetery, you know the cemetery is next to the city, next to the Medina. Okay, what is the meaning of this Midrash? This Midrash was written by Rabbi Yitzhak ben Shushan in 1650. And what is trying to tell him? He is trying to tell him to say that, you know, the Torah Mitzvah Medina is the redemption. He said, you know, the redemption is next to Beta Kvarot, next to the cemetery. There is a connection, what the Midrash says, between country, the people live in a country, and cemetery. Now tell me now, can you go deep to his mind? What did he predict? What is for us, for the Jewish nation? In 1948, Tavshin Het, we got the Eretz Israel. What is the cemetery? What is the cemetery? Big cemetery. What happened before 1948? We had the War of Independence. Before, before, three, the Shoah. He said to him, look, he said, Be'ne Dorenu. Our generation, Shudora Gula, Shela Medina, we have a state. He's a Dor Sheba, Hare Dor Beta Kvarot. He's a generation after the cemetery. Big cemetery. Shela Shoah, Ha'ayuma, of the Shoah. And what is different between the end? When, when, what year was the, the, the war was over? 1945. 1945, 1947, the United Nations voted for the Jewish state. In 1948, we already had declaration, we have a state. Only three years after, it's, it's, it's unrational. It's impossible even to explain this. And we have no people, no weapon, no army, nothing. But we had a state. After the terrible Shoah, Israel was established. That's a nest or not a nest? Bigness. Now he said, Abraham Avinu, was the first one that got a promise that Hashem will give him Eretz Israel. Do you remember this? The Brit Ben Abtarim. Do you remember? So Abraham asked Hashem in 915, Bameda, how do I know? How do I know that Eretz Israel? So Hashem, he asked Hashem, what do you mean, how do I know? What merit the Jewish people will do that they have Eretz Israel? Can you tell me what merit? Amar lo HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Hashem responded to Abraham, Bizchut HaKorbanot, in the merit of the Korbanot. What is Korbanot? We did the Korban in the temple. So I, uh, what, what you understand, what is Korbanot? The sacrifices, Nahon? You know what he's trying to tell us? All the korbanot is the six, six million Jews. The korbanot, the victims. Korban is sacrifice, but is a victim too. Korban, Omer Bizchuta Korbanot, the six million Jews and 24,000 Israeli soldiers who died for the state of Israel, this is a sign for the state. That's why he said, that's Bet Kvarot. So now, so when we got the state, should we celebrate? When I say celebrate, I don't mean to make a party and go to a bar. Hasve Shalom. I said to celebrate big time, should I go to Bet Knesset and say Hallel to praise Hashem, to say Toda? 
Should I say, זה היום עשה השם נגילה ונשמחה בו? This is the day? That's the question. Now, of course for us it's very simple, but some people do not, do not celebrate. But I, what I usually, when I talk to this ultra, ultra orthodox, I give them the Gaon Mivina. Gaon Mivina, he is a, as I said, Gdolador, he lived 1719 to 1797. We're talking, no, we're not talking about, we're talking much, much before the establishment of the State of Israel. Much, much before the Shoah. Before the, fir, the war, the, the First World War. Much before. We're talking about more than 300 years ago. Hagaol Mivina, he also wrote a Kabbalah. He was a very Kabbalistic man. He has a book. It's called Luka Line 10, Sifra Ditzni'uta. In this book, he discovered to us about the redemption. He predicted and proved it, and he said it much, much before 1948. What he said, do you remember how many, now we have Sfirat Omer. Do you know how many weeks we have in Sfirat Omer? Seven. Seven. Do you remember what they are? Seven. Let me, let me remind you. Okay. Bid you look at line 15. Look at line 15. Hesed, Gevura, Tiferet, Netzah, Hod, Yesod, Malchut. The seven levels of Sfirot. Okay? Hesed, Gevura, Tiferet, Netzah, Hod, Yesod. So now, Agaol Mivina said, Sov Zman Asfira, Hamishit. The fifth one. What is the fifth one? Hod. Okay? And the beginning of the sixth one, Yesod, you see Hod, Yesod, Hod is number five, Yesod is six. He said between Hod and Yesod, we will have the redemption of the Jewish people. Could you imagine this? He said, he predicted it in 1700. You know, I'm talking about, let's say, 1750, he wrote the book. 1750. Let's see what's going on. Okay, listen. Veda, shekola yamimahem remez lesheshet. How many days? Hashem created the world. How many days? Six. Six plus one. Nachon? Now, how, how much time is for Hashem one day? How many? Thousands. Nachon, how do you know? Because there is a pasuk. I'll show you the pasuk. The Pasuk says, Ken, she Am Israel, you know that Hashem, 1,000 years for Hashem is one day for, for us. One day. That means how many years maximum the, the world will survive until the Mashiach will come? Seven. Do you know how many years? 6,000 years. 6,000. Now, what year we are now? 5,782. So we are very close to the end. We are very close. Remember, the first 2,000 is Tohu Vavohu. Empty and nothing. The middle two is Matan Torah. The, the next, the third two is Ikveta Demshiha, the footstep of the Mashiach. Rabotai, we are in the footstep of the Mashiach. Mamash. You know, and now we are very close to the end. But we don't have to wait to the end. If we'll do to mitzvot, and then we'll be, you know, tzaddikim, the mitzvah, the Mashiach will be today. But in spite of the fact, you know, the maximum will be in 200 years, you know, by the end of the 6,000. But remember, so every day is 1,000 years of Hashem. Now he said, by the end of number five, in the beginning of number six is Hod and Yesod. Please remember these two words, Hod and Yesod. And now chapter five, he wrote, Agaon Mivina, Veda shekol hayamim em remez l'sheshet alafim shana. I want you to know that Hashem created the six days to give us a clue about 6,000 years. Shehem shisha yamim shel bereshit. They, you know, like we have six days of creation, we have 6,000 years. Okay? Hagaon, 
He said, you know, Ben Sheshet Ayamim Ben Sheshet Alfim. Now the Gaon explained each day where we are standing. Ki ayom ha-shishi shel ha-briya ehel mechetzio ha-sheni. What is yom ha-shishi? How many hours we have a day? We have in the day. How many hours we have every day? 24. 24, very good. And for us, the Jewish people, the day start from the evening or from the morning? Evening. Okay, when I say Friday, Yom Shishi, is the first half of Friday or the second half of Friday? Second half. Second half. Because the first half is the night. The night is over, so keep in mind. So that means what is behind us, how many years? 5,500 years. Nahon? When we reach Friday, Friday is already behind me. I have 5,005 days and, and half of Friday. 5,500. If I'm not clear, please stop me. Okay? Because it's very important to understand the amazing thing that the Gaon Vivina explained. Okay. Now the Gemara. He bring the Gemara in Masechet Sinadrin, page 38. He says, when Hashem created Adam, Harishon, every hour... He did something else. Every hour. Okay? Sha'ar Rishona, first hour, Utzbar Afaro. He gathered all the dust. Sha'ar Shniya Na'asa Golem. The second hour, he was a golem without spirit. Okay? Golem. The third, uh, third hour, Nimtohe Evara. He stretched out his, his organs. The fourth hour, Nizrekabo Neshama. The fourth hour, Hashem put the Neshama inside him. The fifth hour, the Adam stood up on his foot, on his feet. You understand? The sixth hour, he named every animal by name and the word. So which hour he stood up on his feet? Five. The fifth one, remember the Hod. Okay. And the sixth hour already there is a name. He called Eretz Israel Israel. <laughs> there is a name. Okay? So we say, everybody, believe me, America and Panama was not created yet. But Eretz Israel was created. Now, Besov Hashar Hamishit, the end of the fifth hour, which is Hod, and Betchelat Hashar Shishit, which is Yesod, the beginning of the real redemption. Are you with me, my dear friend? You have to take breath and put the fasten the seatbelt. We're going, we're going to take off in a few seconds. So remember, the first hour of Friday, remember it was the dust, and then, you know, every hour something else. But the fifth hour, he stood up on his feet. Kach Am Israel, look what he says. The Jewish nation, Yakum, will stand up and stand up on his feet. When? Do you know when? The fifth hour of the sixth day. The fifth hour of the sixth day, the Jewish nation will stand up on his feet. That's the beginning of the redemption. You know, in the Galut, my dear friend, you don't stand straight. You know, we are not, you know, we are not top, top citizen in America or any in the Galut. When you can stand up on your feet to say, this is my country, this is Eretz Israel. So he said, the fifth hour, remember, the fifth hour of the sixth day, that's the beginning of the redemption. My dear friend, if you know math of grade five, six, seven, eight, help me now, okay? If you have calculator, we need it for two seconds. So do you remember how many days is five days plus plus the night of Friday? How many years is this? Do you remember? 5,500. Very good. You are with me. You know, I said, I ch just check. Very good. So now we have 5,000. Now, how many hours I have in Friday? 24. No, but I'm talking until the redemption. Which hour we said? 19. The fifth hour, Nahon. So now I know how many a day is 1,000. Half a day is 500. I want to know how many years is one hour. Okay? Now, it's very. I, I made a calculation for you. Don't worry. 
So if you take 500, okay, divide by what? How many hours? By 12. Nahon? 500 is 12 hours. Nahon? If I divide 5 by 12, what I get? 41.8. That means every hour, my dear friend, every hour is 41, uh, 41 and 8 months. 41 years. 41 years. If I take now times 5, 41.8 times 5, why times 5? <laughs> Y times five, five hours. How many is this? 209, 208. 208, very good, very good. So tell me now how many years exactly since creation of the world I have when we'll see the redemption. 5,708. Very good, who said this? That's not cappuccino, that's a lollipop. Okay, but... <laughs> But that's exactly, the, remember, 5,000, right? 5,500 plus 208 is 5,708. Do you remember the number I showed you in the beginning, the first text? Yes. Do you remember? You know what is 5,708? You'll see in a minute. You know what is 5,708 in Hebrew? Look, five days, full five days is 5,000. Agree? I go step by step. Half day of Friday is 500, right? Five hours of the of Friday, 208. Sacha called the total 5708. This is, my dear friend, the year Ha Tav Shin Chet. Ha, 5000, Tav Shin, 700, 8. Are you telling me uh, this is coincidence? This is the prediction of Gaol Mevina. That's the prediction of Gaol Mevina. So now, this is, this is something, you know, really now up to us, Bichlal. But remember the number I've shown in the Pasuk. We'll go back to this Pasuk in a few minutes. Now I want to see who decided to proclaim and made a statement that we have a state. Do you remember who? Ben Gurion. Ben Gurion. Ben Gurion was not Shomer Torah Mitzvot, believe me. He didn't say Hallel. He didn't say. He loved Tanakh, but he's not religious. Now, Ben Gurion, you know which day he wanted to, to put the statement? Friday. 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 Now, you know the religious people said to Ben Gurion, crazy? The Hilul Shabbat. If you make now, people will say, no, I'll make, you know, Shabbat is about 7.30, 8 o'clock. We'll make it 4 o'clock, 4 p.m. Okay? Let's do it 4 p.m. And now I'll give you another, you know, safety nest, protection from Shabbat. Don't publicize. Let's make it secretly. Okay? Let's make it secretly. Nobody knows. We'll do it quick. Chick chuck We have a state. And that's it. Listen what happened. By the way, do you know, do you remember how many, how many hours we have in the Friday in the night? 12, Nahon? Yes. 12. How many hours we have from Friday? 5. Nahon? Mm -hmm. So how much is 12 plus 5? 17. 17. Okay? Up to 17 is Friday. From the 17 is the redemption. You agree with it? You, agree? you understand? 17 hours, and after 17, is already connect to Shabbat. You will see in a minute, I'll explain to you. By the way, do you know what is 17? 17 is Tov. Gematariya Tov. Tov is 17. So we have 17 hours. By the way, if I fought for you army time, you know what is army time? How you put the number 5 p.m.? 17. 17. Okay, keep this in mind. So 17 is also 5 p.m. You'll see in a minute why I'm saying this. This is amazing. So Amilari Shonaba Torah, the first word in the Torah that the value is 17 is Tov. Vayar Elohim et or ki Tov. Hashem saw the light is good. And he's trying to say that this light is the redemption. Reb Haim Vital, the student of the Ariya Kadosh, 
he said, look what he says about this. He said, after the fifth hour of Friday, there is a big light coming to the world. You mean, you know what I'm saying in another world? When you start to feel Mama Shabbat, really the spirit of Shabbat, five hours after the morning. After five hours. How do I prove it to you? I'll say you, Mama, the light of Shabbat, the Kedusha of Shabbat, even you're allowed to still to drive, to cook, to bake, to clean, but the spirit of Shabbat is already there. By the way, you know how I prove it to you? By the way, in Minha, when you dive in Minha, when you pray Minha, after Shemona Isre, what you do? You know what you do after Shemona Isre? Every tefillah, Shahrid Minha, what you do after Shemona Isre? Tahanun. Nahon? Now, when you're not allowed to say Tahanun, you know when you're not allowed? Shabbat. Shabbat, you don't say Tahanun. You're not allowed to. It's a happy day. If it's Yom Tov, you don't say Tahanun. You don't say Tahanun on Shabbat. Now, Minha, when you, when you pray Minha, is afternoon or in the morning? Afternoon. Afternoon. Are you allowed to say Tahanun on Minha Friday? No. Nobody said Tahanun. You know why? Because it's already Shabbat in a way. The Simha of Shabbat, the Gdusha of Shabbat is already after five hours. Okay, now he's explaining. From the fifth hour, all the Gdusha, all the world started to elevate. And there is extra addition Kedusha. That's why we say extra Neshama on Shabbat. Ken? When we say every every day, Yom Ehad, Yom Sheni, Yom Shlishi, Yom Revi, I would say Friday. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Yom You don't say shishi, you say ha shishi. That's the only day you say hey. How you start kiddush on Friday? Yom ha shishi. You don't say yom shishi. You know why the hey? There are many explanations. The fifth hour of Friday. Hey is the fifth hour. Hey is five. Yom Ashishi. He said, look, it's not me. It's Rabbi Chaim Vital. To give a hint of the, the, the fifth hour of the day of Friday. She'az matchilim ha'olamot aliyah achare aliyah. By the way, I remember very good. Everybody knows Ezra. You know Ezra? His name is Ezra. His name is Ezra, nachon? He's working on Shevet Ahim. Ezra Cohen. Ezra Cohen. What's the name of his mother? Yadida. Yadida. Do you know that the father, you know when he passed away? I remember the eulogy I gave him. You know when he passed away? Like Erev Pesach or something like that. Erev Shabbat. Erev Shabbat. Yeah, you remember. Mashu Kaze. Yes. Erev Shabbat. You know what I told them? I told Ezra he was so happy what I told him. Because there is something that the body, when after they die, that is called Hibuta Kever. <laughs> Hibuta Kever is a big pain, torturing. But if you are buried on Arab Shabbat after the fifth day, Hashem skip Hibuta Kever. There is no pain. So look, call the Ariya Kadosh, not me. Even he said, Hayim, Rabbi Hayim Vital said, I heard from Morir Rabbi Hari Kadosh, Kola Nikbar Be'erev Shabbat, whoever buried on Friday, na, a Friday day, after five hours, Sha'a Hamishit Bichlal, Eno Ro'e Hibuta Kever. He doesn't see Hibuta Kever. Good for him. Why? Kikdushat Shabbat, Mafrida Mimeno, Kmo Klipa, because of the Kdushah of the Shabbat. And this is the secret, the secret of the sixth hour. The sixth hour, what he said before, sixth hour, there is no Hibuta Kever. 
כי משעה החמישית של יום השישי it's already שבת. As again, as I told you, the spirit of שבת. That's why we express this, by the way, most of the people do not go to work on Friday afternoon. Okay, we don't. Or if we do work, we do it in the house. We cook, we bake, we clean, but we're not going to the office Friday afternoon. So, and if you do, it's not good. You should try very hard to come Friday earlier home and to get ready for Shabbat. So if you do work for in honor of Shabbat, that's good. But try very much not to do after the fifth hour just regular work. Now, why I said, why we don't say Tahanun? You know, when he says Shlosh Esre Midot, we say El Melech Yoshev Al Kisar Hamim. Remember on Yom Kippur, Slichot. You see line two? El Melech Yoshev Al Kisar Hamim. El is Elohim. Elohim is judgment or mercy? Judgment. Judgment. Uh, but now, nah, but look, he said Melech. Yoshev, the king seat, on the chair of Rahamim. What is Rahamim? Ah. Do you know how many hours we have on Shabbat? Shabbat, 24 hours, nakhon? Okay, now, how many hours after we, we have left on Friday that we have Kedusha? We said 12 minus 5. 12 minus 5, how much is it? Seven. Seven. Now seven, now seven is already Kedusha of Shabbat, נכון? Plus 24, how many hours? Seven plus 24. 31. 31. Now 31 is Shabbat, is Rahamim, is not Din. You know how much is L? How much is Gematari of L? L is 31. So he said, I put big in red. El Melech Yosef Al Kisser Hamim. El, not Elohim Midat Adin. El, 31 hours, Hashem sits on the chair on the throne of Rahamim. That's why we said, look how much is important the sixth hour of Friday. And that's what happened to us in the beginning. So, so let's see. Do you remember Ben Gurion? He decided Friday, he convinced everybody. He said, nobody knows. Do you know, we know he did it on Yom Shishi. Do you know what date was it in Hebrew? Hey, E-R. Do you remember the year? Hatav Shin Het. Now, I want to know what time did he make the proclamation. What time? There is a book called Amud Esh, big famous book. Amud Esh, the pillar of fire. On page 548, I open page 548 on this book and there is document. The document says like this, Beyom Shishi, on Friday, Hey Iyar, 5th of Iyar, Ha Tav Shin Het, 5708, May 14, 1948, Ahara Tsaraim, afternoon, Bawa Muzmanim, all the people were invited, all the guests came to the Tel Aviv Museum in Jderot Rothschild 16. By the way, until today, you can visit you can hear the Ben Gurion, it's beautiful visit, by the way. When I took the students, you know, to Israel, I always took them to the museum to, to see what happened. Now, he said 4 p.m. And he said, remember what he said, secretly. They said to keep it secretly. Aval bevoam, when they came to Tel Aviv, matzu et hatsia ir mamtina lahem. All the citizens of Tel Aviv know about it and they were waiting for them. So, there is, you know, among the Jews there is no secret. Everybody knew about this. <laughs> he wanted to keep secret. Everybody, every single Jewish in Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv until today was the biggest city, and everybody came to, to the museum. Samuch le Sha'a Arba Harat Sorain. Mamash close to 4 p.m., David Ben Gurion arrived to the place. Now, so I said, when the Akhraza, the declaration came, exactly one hour after he arrived. What time is it? Five. Five p.m. He hamishit bayom ashishi. It was Friday, the fifth hour. Now he said, he said fifth hour from the morning. He said, remember, 17. Remember the 17? 17 is 5 p.m. 
But he said, Shav, but it just came out that 5 p.m. was 17 hours, exactly, by Yom HaShishi. You think Ben Gurion, he knew Kabbalah? Believe me not. He didn't know. He had no control. He said, we must do it Friday. And that's it. Because it's Mishamayim. Because that's the time of the Geula. So now, are you trying to tell me it's coincidence? He said, He said to the Jewish nation, If you're not listening to me, don't make tshuva. It's going to be like a desert and the enemy. By the way, before 1948, you know how many you know, Jews, few Jews were in Eretz Israel. Who controlled Eretz Israel? The British. Before the British, the Turkish. You know, they, they control Eretz Israel. And Eretz Israel, if you remember Mark Twain, how we describe Eretz Israel? He said like thorns, thorns and thorns and thorns. Nothing, desert. He could not understand. He thought he said milk and honey. It was, Hashem said, when you're not in Eretz Israel, you will be in the Galut and Eretz Israel will be a desert. And that's what happened. But 1948, we came and he said, you know, you will blossom the trees and the pre, you will have fruits in the trees and Baruch Hashem, that's what happened. Now, when Medinat Israel, look what he says. Do you know how many Jews, they asked the Gaon Mevina, how many Jews we have to be in Eretz Israel? Do you remember who is the Satan? Who is the angel of Esav? You know his name? Remember his name? Samael? Ken, good. Sam, we call it Sam. They don't have to say Samael. Sam. Sam, every time the Jews come into Eretz Israel, Sam, the Satan, disturbing us. All the time. Look how many, how many people were in Eretz Israel? No. When we came to Israel in 1948, everybody came to Israel. Islam, the Muslims, the Christians, everybody. You go, go to Jerusalem today, if you go to Jerusalem near the Kotel, you cannot even walk from so many people. Before 1948, it was a desert. The Jews there, everybody there. But he said, but you know, to destroy the Satan, you know how many people you need to destroy the Satan? You know how many Jews you need? How many Jews we were in Mount Sinai? To prevent the Satan. Do you remember how many Jews in Mount Sinai? 600,000. 600, they asked the Gaon, is it possible that we will bring 600,000? Yeah, all the, excuse me, they asked him, all the Jews to Israel? He said, you don't need to bring all the Jews. All what we need to make sure we have 600,000 people in Israel. That's it. And then the redemption will come. Do you know, my dear friend, how many Jews were in Israel in 1948? 600,000 people. Are you trying to tell me it's coincidence? It says 600,000 people were in Israel, you know, Jews in Israel, and then we got the, the redemption. You see here, everything explained to you about the Psalm, the Satan, but we need, Baruch Hashem, we got 600. When we got in 1967, 1967, when we got Jerusalem back, you know how many Jews we have in Israel? All what you have to do, my dear friend, add one zero to 600,000. Mm -hmm. Six million Jews. Now, do you remember how many we were in the Holocaust? Six million Jews. Six million. You know, oh, this six, this number 600,000, 6 million is not coincidence. I just give you piece by piece to see the victim. Remember the cemetery? But everything is replaced. You know, all what we have to do. So that's what we got. Now, do you remember Sfat Emet? Sfat Emet is that more bigur. Look what he said. Another, before 1948, everything before 1948. So until now, my dear friend, I, I showed you what, you know, how we came to Hey ER, how we came. Don't forget the number 5708 that I put in the Pasuk. Haku. I wait for the end. But Sfat Emet explained how many festivals we have for the Jewish people in the Torah. How many? 
How many times do you have to go to Yerushalayim? Three. Three. Okay, what they are, what the holidays? Pesach, Shavuot, Sukkot. Pesach, Shavuot, Sukkot, Look what Sfat, what? no, Yom Kippur is not festival. Festival, I'm talking to go to Yerushalayim, they're not regal, regal. We say Shalosh Regalim, three festivals, is Pesach, Shavuot, Sukkot, okay? Now, Sfat Emet says that, you know, every holiday that we have in the Torah, we will have one holiday from the Rabbanan. He said, what? What do you mean? He said, because there is a light from every holiday. Light from one, from Pesach, to holiday from Rabbanan, holiday from Shavuot, holiday from Sukkot. He said, what? Explain to us. Look what he says. Line 14. Hanukkah ve Purim is rabbis, Rabbanan, or Torah? Rabbanan. Rabbanan. So he said Hanukkah and Purim, they got the light from the two holidays in the Torah. He said, Hem Arot, the light from the festival, Mirgalim. Raka Shalosh Regalim Aforashim Bat Torah, and Torah Shebichtav. What we have is the written Torah. But in the oral Torah, we will have three more holidays. How? He said, Gamke Regalim in Torah Shebaal Peh. He explained, Orot HaMekablim Kedimyon Or Alvana. Remember the moon? The moon has a light or doesn't have a light? Doesn't. Reflect. So the light of the moon is coming from where? The sun. Exactly. So he said it's like the Levana. The light of the rabbi is getting the light from the, the, the written Torah, the Torah Shebikhtav. So Hanukkah and Purim get the light. For In a second, we'll see which holiday each one of them. Okay, look here. Say, Beko, see, okay, go on. Ha, line 19. Hanukkah what the next holiday after Hanukkah? Purim. Or before Hanukkah, I'm sorry, not before. Before Hanukkah. Sukkot. Sukkot. So Sukkot give a light to Hanukkah. Okay? Do you remember when they were the Simhat Beta Shoeva were the dancing? And they said, you know, with uh, with torture, they were dancing with torture. Rabbi Uda, how many torches he took? Eight, four and four. That was a remez for Hanukkah, for the menorah. We said that Hanukkah was not established yet. But it said Sukkot was the light from to Hanukkah. Okay, do you remember when we got the Torah? Which holiday we got the Torah? Shavuot, when we got it with free will? Purim. Purim. So Purim, we got the Torah, remember? So Shavuot give a light to which holiday? Purim. To Purim. So now we know Sukkot to Hanukkah, Shavuot to Purim. They asked the rabbi, what about Pesach? Look what he said. Are you ready? When, when I read this first time, it was 15 years ago, I really fell down from the chair. Umehaga Pesach? And about Pesach? Mekavim anu liyot od. Don't worry. He said very soon we'll have another holiday. Very soon we'll have another holiday from the rabbi. Okay, which holiday is talking about? When, what we got in Pesach? We got in Pesach, freedom. what we got? Freedom. Well, how, do say, how do we say freedom? How do we say independence? Atzmaut. So he said Pesach will give a light to Yom Atzmaut. He said, but he didn't say Atzmaut. He said very soon we will have another holiday. Is not there yet because he said it before 1948. Now, if you have any doubt, look here. Okay. There is Shulchan Aruch. Before I'll go to Adba, Shulchan Aruch of, uh, you know, Shulchan Aruch Harav is uh, the Admor Zaken, Lubavitch. He said that before each holiday, there is foundation, the light means before, let's say, 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, we have to start to get ready for Rosh Hashanah. Every holiday you have 30 days before. So before 30 days before, you start to study about the holiday. So what he said, look, he said, you have to start, the halachot of the festival, 30 days before the festival. Dehainu, Shemipurim, Purim, 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 what I have to start to give Dvar Torah, Alacha, 
and Pesach. Because Purim is 30 days before Pesach. So look, he said clear that his word, Mi Purim Vilach, Yidrashu Yilchot Pesach. So many people has their minhag, Dvar Torah for Purim is about Pesach. Okay? So now, what about Shavuot? Shavuot, by the way, is called Atzeret. Do you know what is 30 days before Shavuot? What, what date is it? No. Lagba Omer is 17 days before. Uh-huh. You know which date? Hey, Iyar. Look what he says. Umehamisha bi Iyar. He didn't say it. Look, he said his word. Fifth of Iyar, Yidreshu ilchot atzeret. You should start to study about Shavuot. And 14 of Elul, you start to study about Sukkot. And that's what he said. And he said, now that means Yom Atzma'ut. Listen, Yom Atzma'ut is the foundation for Matan Torah. From Yom Atzma'ut, the light of, of Shavuot is already, there is a connection. Hey Iyar and Vav Sivan. Vav Sivan and Hey Iyar, we have 30 days. That's Shulchan Aruch Haram. Amazing. Now, do you remember when I told you about Atbash? Now you will see what Sfat Emet said is amazing. You know, remember what is Atbash? Let me explain to you what is Atbash, whoever forgot. You see line one? Aleph is the first Hebrew letter, Nahon? Taf is the last Hebrew letter. Bet is the second Hebrew letter. Shin is the second to the last. Gimel is the third, Resh is the third to the last, okay? It's called Atbash. When you see the concept Atbash, sometimes Hashem gave her remez, clue, clear clue by, by Atbash. It's a concept that people who learn Torah, they know the concept Atbash. What is Atbash? Aleph, Taf, Bet, Shin, Gimel, Resh, Dalet, Kuf, etc., etc. Is it clear? Now, he yes. said by Atbash, on Pesach, how many days we have in Pesach? Eight. How many? Not, not in the Galut, truth, in Eretz Israel. Huh? <laughs> Seven days, Nahon? He said, now the Shulchan Aruch. It's Shulchan Aruch, is Pshat. He said, every day on Pesach will tell you the Hebrew calendar. Every holiday, you know, during the year, for instance. Aleph, the fir, Aleph is the first, Nahon? First day of Pesach, you have a holiday start with Taf. You know what is Taf? Tisha Be'ab. Which holiday we start Pesach this year? Remember? Shabbat. Shabbat. You know when is Tisha Be'ab this year? Shabbat. Shabbat. We'll Shabbat. postpone to Sunday. Sunday. But Tisha Be'ab is Shabbat. Okay? Yes. Now, Bet, do you remember what was the second day? Sunday. Nahon? You know what is Shin? Shin is Shavuot. By the way, by Shavuot, which, which day is this year? Sunday. Sunday. Pesach was Sunday. Mm -hmm. Second day of Pesach was Sunday. And Shavuot is, is the second. Now go quick after you understand. Now third day of Pesach is Resh, Rosh Hashanah. Fourth day of Pesach is Kriyata Torah, which is Simchat Torah. Fifth day of Pesach is Tzom, is Yom Kippur. Sixth day of Pesach is what? Pei, Purim. Rabotai, this is coincidence. Exactly as it is. Every year the same thing. By the way, Purim is the only holiday, not this year, previous year. But it's always sixth day of Pesach. Now, Shulchan Aruch doesn't tell us about seventh day. He got stuck. No explanation. Are you ready? <laughs> now, my my Yomashvei Shel Pesach. What about the seventh day of Pesach? He did not mention. Ma is missing because nobody knew about the future. Do you remember what Sfat Emet said? Very soon you will have another holiday. What the name of the holiday? Atzma'ut. Now Purim is pay. One under what? What the letter under pay? Ain. 
Now the seventh day of Pesach, now we can complete the Adbash. The seventh day of Pesach is Atzma'ut, is Ayn. So now we can perfect to this Adbash. Now the Adbash is perfect. Min Shulchan Aruch, Rabbi Yosef Karo, when he gave us the Adbash, he did not say anything about Shvi'i Shel Pesach. But now after Sfat Emet, and Sfat Emet also didn't say Shvi'i, he said very soon. But it came out that Shvi'i Shel Pesach is exactly an Yom Ha'atzma'ut. Hey, Iyar is always Shvi'i Shel Pesach. Are you trying to tell me coincidence? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. No coincidence. That's too much. Now, do you remember, we've said in the Sfirot, by the way, you know, we have Sfirot. Remember the first week? What is the first week? Chesed. What is the second week? Gvura. Gvura. What the third week? Deferet. What the fourth week? Fourth. Fourth week. Netza. Netza. This, 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 now we are in Netza. Okay? Now we said, you see, Hesed Gvura. But, listen, it's amazing. Now, every day, there is a special. Now, the first day of the Sfirah is Hesed, Sheba Hesed. Because the first Hesed and then the first. Now, the second day of the Sfirah is Gevura Sheba Hesed. Now, the third day of the, of the Sfirah is what? Tiferet Sheba Hesed. And now, Netzach Sheba Hesed. Every day there is a piece that we are clear up the Sfirah. Are you ready now? So I'm curious to know, you know, when the Gaon Mevinah, you know, when he said to his students, you make Aliyah, he said, I want you to make Aliyah Le'eretz Israel. It's going to be difficult, Rabotai. I'm talking about much, much, much before 1948, the Turkish time, when it was terrible situation in Israel. But he said to them in Sfirat Omer, the Satan is in control. You know what the Satan is in control? The Satan is in control. You know what the oxygen of the Satan? You know when he takes his oxygen? Do you know where from? From the Kedusha. From the sanctity. From the sanctity, he takes the, the, the oxygen. So that's why Sfirat Omer is dangerous days. Because the Satan is there. But he said, two days, listen, Gaon Mivina said, two days the Satan has no control. And when you make an Ahat Even Pina on Beta Knesset, do it the 20th of the Omer or 42nd of the Omer. Because 20th of the Omer, the 42 of the Omer, no Satan, the Satan has no control. Nobody can say, ask the guy, he asked the Gaon Mivina why. He's Kabbalistic. He said, Kabbalah. He said, 20th of the Omer, do not. And you know when they make the Anahat Even Pina? The 20th of the Omer. Do you know the neighborhood after the, the walls of Jerusalem? The first neighborhood? You know what they call the first neighborhood? I'm sure you've been there. Near Kikar Tzion. It's called Nahlat Shiva. Nahlat Shiva, you will see the old synagogues. That's the first neighborhood that was established. You know when they put Anahat Even Pina? 20th of the Omer. And he said, you know, and that's a gone winner said 20th of the Omer. Do you know what is 20th of the Omer, my dear friend? Believe it or not, hey, ER. Hey, ER is 20th of the Omer. And he said the Satan has no control. Now, who told Ben Gurion to say? Nobody. Hashem told him. Hashem made why? Because there, this is a day there is no control. Now, do you know another word for Torah? Another word for Torah. Who is from our forefather is Torah. Abraham, Yitzhak, or Yaakov? Yaakov. Torah tzivalanu Moshe Morasha kihilat. Yaakov. Yaakov is Torah. And what is the midah of Yaakov? Tiferet. Tiferet. So Tiferet is Torah. Okay, glory is Torah. Nachon? Now, when you want to study to say, you have to put foundation to the Torah. Nahon, how is it foundation in Hebrew? Huh? No. Foundation. No, foundation, you said the word, remember in the Sfirot, 
is number six. You remember what is number six? After Hod, Yesod. 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 Yesod, Yesod. Yesod is Yosef HaTzadik. Remember. <laughs> Yesod is Yosef HaTzadik. Tiferet is Yaakov. So Yesod is the foundation. Now, when remember when we said we have to start to prepare for Shavuot? Which day we have to start for Shavuot? Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. Do you know in the Sfirot what is Hey, yeah? The, the 20th. And the 20th. No, and, and the Sfirot. Look here, I put line 13. Yesod Shebatiferet. Yesod, you see line 13? Yesod Shebatiferet. That's Hey, yeah. And Hey, yeah is the foundation of the Torah. The foundation of the Torah is exactly the 20th of the Omer. Don't tell me it's coincidence, huh? Now, I'll tell you another thing. But I, I, I would like to suggest to really to fasten seatbelt a little bit more. Because when Yaakov had no fear from Esau, and he said to his wife, let's go back to Israel. Do you remember when? When you said when you had Yosef. Yeah, who said Yosef? Who said? Ruthie. Ruthie, why Yosef? Because Yosef is uh, if it is Yosef. So what? I said that I tell you why. Yosef, Esav has no control on Yosef. He controls the Satan. Why? He said, Vaya bet Yaakov Esh. Uvet Yosef Lehava. Uvet Esav Kash. Now Yaakov is fire. Yosef is the flame. And, ya and, and Esav is the straw. One spark from the flame of Yosef will consume Esav. That's why the biggest enemy of Esav is Yosef. So who Yaakov needed to go to, to meet Esav? To protect him? Yosef. 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 So Yosef plus Yaakov is a win-win. And Yaakov is Tiferet, Nachon. And Yosef, what is he in the Midot? Yesod. And what is Yom Ha'atzma'ut? Yesod Sheba Tiferet is Yaakov plus Yosef. Is Yosef plus Yaakov, Yesod Sheba Tiferet. That's why, that's why Baruch Hashem, until today, we have the foundation of Eretz Israel. Foundation of Torah. By the way, I don't know if you know, before 1948, how many yeshivot we had in Israel? You know how many yeshivot? You can count them on one and two hands. Do you know how many todays we have? Literally, literally countless. Netzah. Nobody ever to count. Every street you have kolel, you have yeshiva, you have this, you have bet knesset. It's all over. And all of this because of the establishment of the state of Israel. And how could you stop and not to say Halel and Yom Ha'atzmaut? To say Todah Rabbi Hashem. Just to say Todah Rabbi Hashem. That's all. All this when I skip, I explain to you already. Agaon Mevina continued to say, Ma'aser Okeah, Le Rabbi El Azar Okeah. He said, You know, every Pasuk in the Torah, every Pasuk in the Torah, there is a meaning and, and to, to a certain, uh, certain, certain clues for what will happen in this number. Okay? That's what he said. Le Mashal, Ateva Shalom, the word Shalom. Is first time in the Torah in Pasuk number 376. Can <laughs> and the word shalom itself gematria is 376. So Sion, the third one, when we return to Israel, it was 5700. It says, kol kelala ketuva. Because he said, you know, on this year, 5,700, Hashem will bring the curse upon you. That was. You know what is Haftav Shin? You know what year is in, uh, in you know, 
not the Hebrew, is 1940. Really, when the Shoah started. Hagaon said, Beruach Kocho, he said, before the redemption, we'll have a complete destruction. He said it. He said he predicted the Shoah, too. He said, before, you know, we have the return to Zion, we'll have a disaster. We'll have, you have destruction. So here, here we have more and more and more. I want to say, so now, do you remember the Pasuk that I gave you the number? Do you remember? I tell you, this is the big Pasuk. Adonai Elohecha. Hashem, your God, will bring you, El Haaretz, to the country. Asher Yarshu Avotecha, that Hashem promised to your forefathers, Virishta, and you're going to inherit the land. To inherit the land, Rabotai, I didn't mean to make Ali, I mean sovereignty. You have to have sovereignty. Vetivcha, Virbecha Avotecha. Hashem will make good to you. And you know what number is this Pasuk, Rabotai? Do you remember what I told you in the beginning of the Sheur? Martha, do you remember the number? What number was it? 5,708. 5,708. Do you remember why this? What is this in Hebrew? 5,708? Ha Tavshin Het. Tavshin Het. That means, you know, Pasuk number 5,708 is Ha Tavshin Het. It's amazing. And Hashem said, I'll bring you to the land that I promised your forefather. The exactly number 5708. Are you telling me this coincidence? I don't believe that. Okay. It's incredible. This is... Uh, now, do you remember who is going to bring the Mashiach? I mean, which lady? Which lady will... Be me? Raheli Menu. Raheli Menu, maybe because married, but the offspring of whom? Which lady? We are very soon to the holiday. David Hamelech. No, where David Hamelech came from? Whom? Ruth. 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 They say, look what it says in Gilat Ruth. Lini Alayla, sleep tonight. Vayaba Boker. Naomi said to Ruth, to remember, go to Boaz. And sleep over there. And in the morning, if he will redeem you, good. And if he doesn't want to redeem you, by the way, who said to, to whom this? Not Naomi to Ruth. Boa said to Ruth. Why? Who was the closest relative of Ruth? Not Boaz. Was another guy. Um, Ploni Almoni. Ploni Almoni, good. <laughs> Very good. So now, why he didn't redeem her? He said, look, you want to get the land? He said, yeah, the land of Mahlon Chilion. And Elvimelech, he wanted. He said, but you have to get married to Ruth. Ah, no, 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 no. Shikze, you know. He didn't want to. But then Boaz said to her, leave me a Laila, sleep tonight. And in the morning, I'm going to tell him, if he will redeem you, good, you will be his wife. If not, I will redeem you. That means I guarantee, Ruth, that you will be redeemed. That's Pshat. What is Geula? Now let's go deep to the Drash. What is Laila? What is Boker? Laila is darkness. Boker is light. Is, da is Geula. Omer Shikhvi Ada Boker. What is Shikhvi? Lie down, sleep. Until the morning. Remember, see, Lishikhvi Ad Aboker. Do you know what is Haboker? Boker in Hebrew, in Negemetaria? Boker. Bet, Kuf, Resh. Shikhvi, Bok, Ken? Shikhvi Ad Boker. Take the hay out. Shikhvi Ad Boker. You can do it later on. I can tell you. Exactly 708. What is Haboker? What is the hay? 5,000. So what he said to her, you sleep, you know, say, but you know, the redemption will come. Even in the Pasuk, Shikhvi Ada Boker is 5,708. Are you telling me coincidence? You know, look, the Torah is 5,845 Sukim. 
And the Pasuk 5708, Hashem said to, I'll bring you to the land. By the way, look about the key word here. Veshavta. What is Veshavta? You return. It said Tshuva. Veshav. And you return. Shevutcha. Tshuva. Veshav. Vekibitzcha mikol amim. Gather you. So look how many times the word Tshuva. Hapasuk. He said, Ma'anien. He said the word Tashuv. You will return. And Veshavta is the same letter? Tashuv. Veshavta. Is the same spelling? No. It's same letter in different Same words. letters. Tashuv veshavta same letter. Vav shin beit bet taf. Nachon? Now, take the tin, the taf and the shin. Taf shin. How much is vav and bet? Vav is six. Bet is two. How much six and Seven. two? Eight. Eight. What is letter? What letter is eight? Head. Head. So Rabotai, even the word Teshuvah, Tashuv Veshavta, is Tav Shin Het. Is Tav Shin Het, the word Veshavta. As I said, the only say by historia, the Tav Shin Het, the word, even if you take the word Teshuvah, now take the word Teshuvah. So tell me what is Teshuvah? That's cappuccino on the house. Arrepentimiento. Teshuvah. Uh -huh. Even not gematria, just change the word, change the order. Just give me another word that they equal to teshuvah. You know what is teshuvah? Ha tafshin het. Teshuvah is ha tafshin het. It's 5,708. Coincidence? No, no, no. Okay. I have much more, but I would like to end up here. Okay? Do you remember, you know, when we, we, what happened to us, you know, the last few weeks with Amalekim, that coming, you know, with acts to kill Israeli citizen. And, and, and I'm talking, we're not talking about 34 years. We're talking about 19 years old, 20 years old. I mean, kids. Young, young people, hatred above and beyond. They call themselves Shahidim. Shahid, like, you know, Kedoshim. But Hashem said, when you light al Amalek, Yad al Kes, Ya. Do you remember what is Kes? When you wipe Amen Amalek, He said to him, He said to him, You have to wipe him out of the earth. Mahotim head, Zechar Amalek, Mitahat Hashemayim. When you fight against Amalek, no memories, everything destroyed. Who missed? Who missed the point and did not kill Amalek? Shaul Amalek. Shaul Amalek. He lost the kingdom because of this. All of a sudden, had mercy. When you have Amaleki, and remember today, Amaleki for me, if you, if somebody wants to kill a Jew because he's a Jew, he's Amaleki. And if somebody come to kill Amalek Yehudi because he's Yehudi, kill him. And my opinion, all his family, all the people that really gave him the education, just kill him. I wish that one day we'll have death penalty for the terrorist. And mm -hmm. kick out all the family. Nobody, nobody needs them. But he said, I'm sorry that I'm saying, you know, but uh, that's what I believe. You can disagree with me. But even Shamizbeah, Kiyad al Kesia, but he said, what is Kes? You know what is Kes? Chair. Chair. How do you say chair in Hebrew? He said, he said, what is missing? Aleph. Aleph. And now what is Aleph. Yah? What is Yah? Shem Hashem. Right? What is missing? Vav Hey. Nachon? Look what Rashi says. Umau Kes, line 11. Umau Kes velo Neymar Kiseh. Why it says Kes velo Kiseh? And why the name of Hashem is only Yud K? Nishba. Listen line 12. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Hashem swore she, his name is not complete and his throne is not complete until we wipe out Amalek. When we wipe out Amalek from the earth, then the Hashem will be complete. Ready for the next one? Now, what date 
הוא יביא יום העצמאות? ה' קיפ ה' אוקיי? What date is פסח? יוד ה' 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 יוד פסח is 15, we have י"ק, נכון? Look like 19. פסח is י"ו, which is י"ק 15. Now, שבועות, what שבועות? ו' סיוון. So what we got now? י"ק ו' י"ק ו' What letter we are missing for the name of God? Hey. What that is יום העצמאות? Hey, yeah. If at the K-E-R, Pesach, and Shavuot, we have the full name of God. Because remember, Pesach, Shavuot, and Yom Ha'atzma'ut, and now I add Yom Yerushalayim as well, it's under one umbrella. That's Yud K Vav K. That's Eruf HaTarichim. That's why, by the way, they said, Hey is called Malchut, royal, in the Kabbalah. And the Hey E-R is the Malchut. Now the name of Hashem, Yud K Vav K. Now you can say, זה היום עשה אדוני נגילה ונשמחה בו. This is the day we have to rejoice and be happy in it. What is בו? Not in the day, in Hashem. We have to praise Hashem. And now I'm asking myself, my ריבונו של עולם, you know, even between the first destruction of the temple and the second destruction of the temple, we never had 2,000 years. It was 100 years, 70 years. But we never had 2,000 years without sovereignty on Eretz Israel. Now we have sovereignty. Of course, this is not the Tachlis. Of course, this is not ideal. You know, the idea that the chief rabbi of Israel will be in control. Of course, we want to be like David Amelech. But no, but at least we have sovereignty. We have sovereignty. Step by step, step by step, we'll go and get the redemption. I don't think that I think this is, you know, we have the complete government and we have the complete... No, 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 no. We are far away from this. But what? We're not far away. We have a country. We have a country. We have Yeshivot. We have Bet Knesset. We can study Torah. We can pray to Hashem. We can go to the Kotel. We can do whatever we want under sovereignty. That's why we have to appreciate. And we pray, Be'ezrat Hashem, Be'ezrat Hashem, the Mashiach will come. Then even the prime minister will be religious and the whole government will be religious. 120 members of the Knesset, you know what will be? 120 members of the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin also 120. And that's the Sanhedrin will be in control. But that's the ideal. That's the way. That's the task. That's why we have to aspire. But because of this, I would not say, I would not say, at least don't say Tahanun. We have to praise Hashem. So let's say, זה היום עשה השם נגילה ונשמחה בו. And בעזרת השם, we'll go to יום ירושלים, we'll continue.